Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yeah, so first I'd just like to uh, bring everyone's attention to an incident that we had this morning. Uh, this morning before 4 o'clock uh, a.m., members of the Metropolitan Police Department responded to the 4300 block of Connecticut Avenue Northwest. Uh, that location uh, is where the Days Inn Hotel is located. Uh, our officers uh, responded there for a shooting. Uh, once they arrived on the, at the location, they located a female victim initially uh, that, was in, that was inside of the lobby of the hotel suffering from a gunshot wound. Uh, we later learned that there was a second female victim in one of the hotel rooms who was also suffering from a gunshot wound. Uh, later on, two males showed up at area hospitals seeking treatment for gunshot wounds, and there was a third uh, female that also had a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. Uh, right now, uh, we are investigating this case, and the pieces are starting to come together. It appears that this uh, incident involved this uh, incident involved a situation where people are, are known uh, to each other. Uh, right now, we have uh, persons who are cooperating with the Metropolitan Police Department, and we are hopeful to bring this case uh, to closure uh, very soon. Uh, the person who is deceased, uh, we have not been able to make next to kin notification uh, as of yet because the person's identity has not been uh, uh, confirmed. But once that identity is confirmed, we'll make notification uh, to the family. And after notification to the family, uh, obviously, we will release that information uh, to the public. Uh, at this point, we don't think that there's an any immediate danger uh, to the public. As a result of this incident, there was a, a weapon, at least one weapon has been recovered so far. Uh, again, we're still in the very preliminary stages of the investigation. This happened very early this morning, uh, but our detectives are working around the clock and I'm very confident that we'll be able to bring this case to closure. Sam? Like drug related or anything like that? It, it's hard to say uh, right now and exactly uh, what what led up to this. Uh, we know that there was a gathering of some individuals or some people inside of one of the rooms. Uh, these people legitimately, uh, they came into the District of uh, Columbia, it appears po possibly from Maryland. They rented a room. Um, it may have been some kind of just social um, interaction going on. And one thing led to another uh, that resulted to this, this shooting. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, we don't have all of the facts right now to, to be able to release to the, to the public. But again, based upon what I know so far, uh, we're moving uh, very quickly to try to get this case uh, wrapped up. So these are regular customers. It wasn't like some kind of, a, you know, the city has puts people up and things like that. No. So at one point, uh, the city, we, we used to. We, at one point, we utilized uh, that location for uh, people who were needed or needed to quarantine during COVID. However, uh, this has nothing to do with anybody who's receiving District of Columbia services for COVID or anything like that. Mark? Chief, was all the gunfire contained to the one hotel room? And was there an exchange of gunfire, do you know? There's possibly an exchange of gunfire uh, that we are, again, as we investigate, forensically look at all this stuff, we're trying to put the pieces together, Mark. So it'd be a little premature for me to go too far into it, but it's possible that that, that, that happened. And again, at least one firearm has been recovered right now and we're investigating. And again, we have people uh, who are uh, uh, certainly uh, cooperating and we're just trying to get to the bottom of it. It all contained to that one room? The incident was pretty much contained right there uh, to, the, to the room. Hey, Chief, so we've yes. heard about community members who have complained about drug activity, including, including sales and use at the hotel. Uh, can you discuss that, including maybe how many calls you've gotten to that address for, for complaints? Yeah, so looking at that address, if we look back to July, I guess it was, there have been 73 calls for service, uh, but all of those calls, I mean, it run the gamut, uh, 16, uh, 18 calls for disorderly conduct, uh, a couple of calls for investigate the trouble, some miscellaneous calls, check on the welfare, assaults, uh, uh, just a, a gamut of, of different calls. I think some of the uh, drug complaints, um, that were that were received were investigated. Uh, I don't know, not necessarily sure if this is as a result of sometimes people hanging out in front of the hotel. I personally have uh, knowledge of that space there. I frequent the the cleaners that's right there. Uh, so sometimes there are individuals that are hanging out like right there at, on on Connecticut Avenue, and I'm very. Uh, I believe that that's really kind of the source of it, like right there uh, at the hotel. But just those were the list of the calls for service that we've had since July. Thanks. Is that high? Say it again. Go ahead. Though. Sorry. 
Thanks. We also heard from the A and T chair in the area that uh, they had heard a man had walked in off the street and entered the hotel and, and shot up the party. I don't know if that aligns with anything you've heard. Well, I mean, certainly somebody um, went to the location, and again, there was a shooting. Uh, again, we have to put those facts together to really try to understand better what exactly happened. I don't know if it was an invited person, but we, we have to work to get to the bottom of that. Steph? If you're saying there's no threat to the community, does that mean that the suspects, whoever was shooting, that they are either in custody or in the hospital, but they are in possession of or right now in police custody? No, we think that, um, um, that we have many of the people who were there who were present at the time of the shooting. Uh, we know that. But uh, there could be other things that evolve as a result of the investigation. But right now, it does not appear to be an immediate public threat where we are setting up, you know, a, uh, we're setting up a perimeter and actively searching for someone in the immediate area right now. And can you describe the firearm? A uh, handgun. Were any bullets uh, found to have gone through the room walls? That gets into the evidence, so I won't really discuss that part. Mark? Uh, yeah, Chief, you talked about the 73 calls for service. Yeah. Has this location been determined to be a nuisance property because of the number of 911 calls for service? I don't know that it's been determined to be a nuisance property. Uh, I know that uh, our district commander there, Commander Bedleyon, uh, is certainly working with uh, some of our other you know, partner agencies to bring attention to the issues that, that are causing the police to be called there, but I don't know if it's been determined, uh, officially determined, whatever that means, to, to be a nuisance property. We've had 73 calls there for different, uh, different things, you know, disorderly and the like, uh, but again, that, that has, that's just kind of taken a snapshot in time from July to now to, uh, to really report on those calls. And can I just ask for you and, and for the mayor, you know, we we're at, I believe, 12 homicides so far this year, which is just, maybe, I think, maybe two shy of this time last yep. year. So we continue to see with this trend of more and more killings uh, in the district like we saw last year. What do you say to residents, to both of you, that who are losing confidence in your ability to, to, to slow down this trend? Well, I would hope that people will certainly keep their, their confidence to, to uh, slow down the trend because we're doing absolutely everything that we possibly can. When you look at the homicides that have occurred today, again, inside the uh, inside of a hotel, a dispute between individuals, uh, prior to that, some of the other homicides I can think about, you know, the case we just closed the other day on Georgia Avenue, a domestic case inside of a car. I mean, we see things like that that happen. I think the issue is uh, the availability of firearms to individuals, but beyond that, the way that people are choosing to resolve conflict in community. Uh, that's not something that's unique to the District of Columbia. That is an issue, and that's an issue that we must do everything that we possibly can. I'm going to arrest. I'm going to close cases. I'm going to do everything that I possibly can to bring individuals to justice. But I think that the issue goes beyond really you know, what the Metropolitan Police Department uh, did or didn't do. It's really on the front end of these things, like how do we even find ourselves in this space to begin with? You know, how do you explain a person who shot and killed a woman inside of a car uh, in front of her children? How do you explain that, right? I mean, what, what government intervention might stop something like that from happening? I mean, if someone has an idea, I mean, I'm certainly open to those ideas, but I think it just speaks to where some of the people are uh, in community. But more importantly, Mark, I think uh, you bring up another very important point. While we must, the, it's the reason why we must be very focused as we talk about the collective ecosystem in our, in our criminal justice system, why we have to be very much focused on making sure that people are not in community committing these types of crimes. You know, when you look at our um, violent criminals, um, our homicide suspects, as an example, uh, the average arrest number for homicide suspects, 11.3 arrests for homicide suspects, right? So these individuals are no stranger to our criminal justice system, but I think we have to really look differently in that space. And you've heard me talk all year, last year, about accountability. I'm not gonna stop talking about that because it's an important issue, right? It is a very important issue. And when we talk about accountability, you know, people move differently in that space, but that is an important piece of this, you know, when violent criminals are in our, in our community. Chief Conti will do everything that he can to put bad guys in jail, I'll assure you of that.